Oh hey, and welcome to another episode of The Blue Wizard Bakes. I'm Joe, the Blue Wizard. It's finally September, kids, which means that it's the beginning of one of my favorite times of the year. Apple season. You know, I have always loved the taste of apple baked goods, but I've started to love it even more ever since my family and I have started a tradition of going apple picking every year. Apple picking has made me appreciate so much more the baked goods that I make with apples. Being able to get your main ingredient straight from the source makes your baked goods just taste all that much more special. So in honor of the beginning of apple season, I am going to share with you one of my absolute favorite recipes today. And that is my recipe for spiced apple bread. Now this recipe is truly one of mine and one of my family's favorites. The first time that I made it, I knew I had a winner. And when I shared it with my family, they agreed. I literally make about 10 to 20 loaves of this apple bread every single year around apple season. I've made it so many times, I could probably make it in my sleep. In fact, there was that one time that I woke up in the morning and there was a freshly baked loaf of apple bread sitting on the counter. I don't know how it got there, but I can only imagine I must have done it in my sleep. This apple bread has an awesome texture and it has the perfect combination of apples and spices. I know that you guys will love it. But why am I sitting here trying to sell it to you when I could just show you how to make it? Let's head to the kitchen. All right, so because this is a baking recipe, we are of course going to start by preheating our oven. Today we're going to be preheating our oven to 350 degrees. We are also going to need to get all of our ingredients together in one place. This way we have everything we need, where we need it, and exactly when we need it. So uh, let's make some magic. So now that we have everything together, we can start making our delicious apple bread. We're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So inside of a large bowl, I have already added in a cup and a half of regular all-purpose flour. And to that, I'm going to add three quarters cup of granulated sugar. Now we're gonna start adding in our other ingredients, the things that we need a little bit less of. I'm going to add in one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of delicious cinnamon, half of a teaspoon of salt, half of a teaspoon of ground ginger, quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Whew, that was a lot of dry ingredients, okay? But prom I promise you, it's all going to be worth it. All of those spices are going to give our bread just the most awesome flavor. So I'm gonna take and whisk these dry ingredients together inside of our bowl, just to make sure that they're evenly combined. This is a type of recipe we call a quick bread, which means it comes together very quickly uh, to mix the batter up together before we bake it. So we wanna make sure that everything's evenly distributed because we don't wanna stir it too much once we start adding in the liquid ingredients, because remember, we want it to be quick. All right, now the last thing we have to add to the dry ingredients is um, sort of like the mix-ins to our uh, bread. And that's going to be a half a cup of chopped pecans and a half a, a, half a cup of dried cranberries. Now you often see in uh, recipes, people will try to like add all of the mix in stuff like very at the very, very end. Um, I don't do that because I found that when you do that, all of the mix-ins, like if you were adding nuts or dried cranberries or chocolate chips or whatever, they all sink to the bottom of whatever it is that you're making. If you add them in to the flour ahead of time uh, and coat them in flour, it actually makes them less likely to sink to the bottom of whatever it is that you're making. So there's a good tip for you. All right, and that's our dry ingredients done. Let's move on to the wet ingredients. So I'm gonna actually mix all of my wet ingredients inside of the this uh, two cup measure. I already have half a cup of vegetable oil measured out into that cup. And I'm just going to add in another half a cup of plain uh, regular yogurt. Now I'm actually uh, for today, I'm using vanilla flavored yogurt instead of the plain like I normally use because for whatever reason at the grocery store, I couldn't find plain. Um, I don't understand, thank you, Walmart. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm using actually vanilla flavored. I normally wouldn't do that because this uh, yogurt actually has a little bit of extra sugar mixed in with it. Um, so it might throw off some of the flavors a little bit. Um, but I have done it before and it has turned out okay. Um, but definitely I prefer the plain if you can find it. All right, so find the plain regular yogurt to add into this instead of the vanilla. But if you can only find the vanilla, it's fine in a pinch. All right, so the next thing we're going to add into our liquid ingredients is a teaspoon of vanilla. 
And we are also going to add in two eggs. One. And two. And then I'm just gonna take and give that a whisk. Wanna make sure that that's all evenly combined. All right, now that takes care of most of our wet ingredients, but it doesn't take care of all of them. We need to add in the star of our apple bread, which of course is an apple. All right, so we're gonna take and add that into our wet ingredients. Now, the way that I prepare my apples for this recipe is I take first, I peel them. And then we need to shred them. I'm gonna use the large holes on a box grater in order to shred this apple. Now, some people will go and try to take the core out of this. To me, it's actually easier to shred if you keep the core on, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take and scrape off all of the sides of this apple. See, easy. And the core makes it so that there's something to hold on to. Now I'm using a Granny Smith apple for this recipe today, but you can use any uh, apple that's good for baking. So a Pink Lady apple, um, I think that uh, Gala apples are good, John of Golds. There's lots of different apple varieties out there that are good for baking. So if you can't find Granny Smith, you can always use one of those, but Granny Smith is definitely a favorite. And there, see, shredding that apple was super easy because I left the core on. So now that's all that that's left and we can just toss that out. All right, so now that our apple is shredded, we actually need to take and drain out some of the excess liquid because we don't want our bread to be watery because nobody likes watery bread. That's just, well, gross. So I'm gonna take and put my uh, apple shreds onto a piece of paper towel, which I have double, triple, quadrupled up, all right, to make it so that it holds together. And I'm just going to take and squeeze out all of the excess liquid. Just squeeze it out, okay? You don't have to go too wild with it. You just wanna make sure to get out most of the liquid. And all of that liquid that's inside of there would have ended up in your bread. So imagine that, that would be not good, all right? So now that our apples have been squeezed out, we can add them into the rest of our liquid ingredients. I'm just gonna take the apples, throw them in there. And then carefully, mix them in with the rest of our liquid ingredients. I say carefully because there's a lot in this cup. And there we go. That seems nicely combined to me. Now let's take and bring it all together. Now we're gonna take and mix our dry and wet ingredients together inside of our large bowl. All right, so you see how quickly this recipe comes together? So I'm just gonna take all of my liquid ingredients inside of the cup, which is why I like to measure it in the, or mix it in the cup because it's uh, all together and I don't have to dirty another bowl. All right, and I'm going to take then and quickly mix together the wet ingredients and dry ingredients using a spatula. You don't wanna use a mixer for this because you can overbeat your dry ingredients, which will make your bread tough. And we don't like tough bread. Mmm, I could just smell all of those spices that we added in. Oh, the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Oh, it's just, it smells fantastic. Yum. This bread recipe is so good, I will often actually double the ingredients and make two loaves at a time. I make a lot of these loaves every year. I get sort of a production line going. <laughs> That's it, that's our batter. So the last thing that we have to do now is bake it off. So I'm gonna take my loaf pan over here, uh, which is a regular loaf pan you could buy at any uh, kitchen supply store. And I just lined it with parchment paper and I lined it in such a way that it forms like a sling so that you can easily pull the bread out once it's done baking. All right, and I'm going to take and pour our batter into that loaf pan. Now you might notice as I'm pouring that there might be a few little, little dry spots of flour in this, that's okay. All right, a couple little dry spots is not that big of a deal when you're baking a bread like this, which is again called a quick bread, which is also the same thing as making muffins. If you have a couple of dry spots, not that big of a deal. It's better than over mixing and making tough bread or tough muffins. 
So now I'm just going to take and flatten that out a little bit. Easy peasy. And that's our bread ready to go into the oven. So we're gonna put this into our 350 degree oven for about 55 minutes, uh, or until you take a toothpick, insert it into the center, and it comes out clean. So uh, let's go. Mmm. In the short amount of time that it took me just to clean up those few dishes, my kitchen is already filling with the smell of delicious apple bread baking in the oven. I cannot wait, but we do have to wait a little bit longer for it to come out of the oven. While we wait though, I just want to take this time to remind you that if you like this video, make sure that you go and give that like button a good old slap, all right? Because it really helps me out when you do that to promote my video and share it with many more people. I also want to remind you that if you haven't subscribed already, well, why not? Make sure that you go and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications. This way you're notified every time that I post a new video. If you want to catch up with me and see what I'm doing at other times when I'm not making videos, make sure to go and follow me on both Instagram and Twitter at the handle at JoeTheBlueWiz. And finally, if you'd like this recipe or any of my other recipes, you can make sure to go and click the link in the description box below or just go straight to bluewizardfood.com. Once our bread is done baking, I'm going to remove it from the oven, place it onto a wire rack, still in the pan to cool for about five minutes. Once the five minutes is up, I'm going to use the sling that I made out of parchment paper to pull the bread loaf out of the pan and let it cool completely on the rack. So now that our bread is completely cooled, it's time for my favorite part of the show, the tasting. I'm just gonna cut off the little butt of our bread over here, cause you know, it's one of my favorite parts. And here we go. Holy crap. You know, every year I make this, I forget just how good it is. This stuff, it'll just blow you away. If you don't make this, as soon as you're done watching this video, you're crazy. I'm telling you, you're crazy. Mmm. So good. Mmm. Well, kids, that's all that we have time for here today on The Blue Wizard Bakes. Remember, you don't have to be a professional chef or even a wizard in order to make magic in your kitchen. Bye now.